What's good? It's Wug. Teofimo Lopez just pulled out a close split decision win over Sandor Martin. And the scorecards were 96 to 93 for Lopez, 97 to 92 for Lopez, and then 95 to 94 for Sandor Martin. 97 to 92 Lopez. So this fight featured a knockdown. In the second round where Sandor Martin caught you know, Teofimo Lopez, he, he, Lopez was somewhat off balance, but the punch landed and Teofimo Lopez went down. But what that 97 to 92 scorecard indicates is that they gave Lopez eight out of the 10 rounds. And look, as I'm watching this fight, I get it. Lopez actually won on the punch stats. Like he landed more punches by like 20 overall. But if you're looking at the quality of the punch landed, it's almost like the judges here at least two out of the three of the judges, did not give Sander Martin credit for turning the fight into his style of fight. Like we knew, look, I felt like this was going to be a tricky and difficult fight for Teofimo Lopez, but I thought that his boxing acumen would shine through a bit more. Like, he did land to the body pretty effectively. I like it when he throws, for instance, the right hand to the body. So he was connected with Sandro Martin. He, uh, they clashed heads in the early rounds. That opened up a cut, busted up Sandro Martin's nose. Like, to me, that was like the most significant strike landed for Teofimo Lopez in that fight. It looked like it was an issue. Sandro Martin was breathing out of his mouth, like from like the third or fourth round on. But if you look at how this fight was fought, you would see Teofimo Lopez trying to press, but he, he had to be cautious because he kept on getting caught by Sandro Martin's check right hook. Like he kept eating it. But it's like if Teofimo Lopez jumps in and throws two to three punches or four punches and you see Sandro Martin slipping or, or, or rolling with them, catching them and moving and then angling out and then throwing a punch and then the one or two punches Sandro Martin throws land more flush where they're kind of rocking Teofimo Lopez's head back and Teofimo Lopez is kind of walking into the counter punch, whereas the punches that Teofimo Lopez is letting go, again, majority of them are being picked off or just missing badly. Like, he would sometimes whiff with like three out of four or four out of five punches at a time. Like, I thought the Sando, Sando Martin can box his ass off. Like, look, Mikey Garcia shouldn't feel too bad about that one, right? Like, I think that with this fight, if nothing else, it it further validates that, yes, yeah, Sandor Martin is for real. He's one of those sweet science guys that, you know, is just going to be a matchup nightmare for a lot of fighters. Like, a lot of people are going to maybe take away from this fight that Teofimo Lopez is even more vulnerable than we thought he was. Like, there were, you know, he lost to George Cambosos, and, you know, he's kind of developed a bit of a reputation of being somewhat of a head case. Just in terms of, you know, there always being something that kind of influences the performance that's not strictly boxing related. Like his ability to stick to the game plan is somewhat hit and miss. Like I know that he stuck to the game plan and executed well in the biggest win of his career, the huge upset over Vasily Lomachenko. But with Teofimo Lopez, I think that a lot of people are going to walk away from this fight against Martin like... Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think he's going to do well against, you know, the upper upper echelon of the 140 pound division, which you're going to have to put Santa Martin somewhere near that upper upper ech echelon. But I'm thinking, you know, not so fast. I think that there are a lot of very good fighters at 140 who might be better on paper than Sandor Martin. But I think that Teofimo Lopez would potentially perform much better against even better fighters than he did here against Sandra Martin. In short, I don't think most guys could fight as well defensively against Teofimo Lopez as Sandra Martin did. We saw him do it against Mikey Garcia. Now we've seen him do it against uh, Teofimo Lopez. And just the fact that the crowd was as quiet 
as it was, should tell you that things were not going Teofimo Lopez's way. This was his Heisman night. This was like the let's make a statement fight. Even though, you know, a lot of people saw this as a potential trap fight for Teofimo Lopez, just given, you know, Sandra Martin's southpaw style, his defensive move laterally style, his good counter punching, his ability to roll and again, make you miss, slip shots, counter effectively. And there's also something about Sandra Martin's demeanor. He's ultra confident. And you can see this in the lead up to the fight. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, does he really believe as much as he kind of seems like he believes that he's about to just handle business and win this fight against Teofimo Lopez? I'm convinced that he actually believed that he would. And his in-ring composure is excellent. Like even after his nose got busted up by that headbutt, he really didn't miss a beat in terms of doing what he needed to do from a boxing standpoint. Look, Teofimo Lopez did keep on pushing the pressure. And to his credit, I thought that he might have won, you know, maybe two out of the three final rounds of that fight. But I had Sandra Martin edging that one, probably something like six rounds to four. I could understand a draw and keep in mind with the knockdown, a draw in terms of rounds. Because again, this was only a 10 rounder. This was not a 12 rounder. And so when I saw Teofimo Lopez seemingly falling back on the scorecards, I'm thinking, man, he's really going to have to get to work to make the scorecards work out in his favor. So this being a 10 round fight made things even more tense as it got into the second half of the fight because it looked like Teofimo Lopez might have been on his way to quietly losing a decision to Sandra Martin in a similar way that Mikey Garcia quietly went on to lose a decision to Sandra Martin. Teofimo Lopez did, again, keep pushing the issue. He did keep going to the body. He did find more and more opportunities, I believe, in the second half of the fight where he kind of had Santa Martin's back touching the ropes to where he had more opportunities to let his hands go and actually hit something. But it looked like in the middle of the ring, Santa Martin was the better boxer than Teofimo Lopez in the middle of the ring, which was very, very interesting. So, you know, I don't think that because Teofimo Lopez has such a kind of a bad performance here, like you, I, look, I wouldn't hate a draw, but again, a draw on paper round wise means that Sandra Martin wins the fight because he scored the knockdown. So you've got that point going in his direction. There should have been a second uh, knockdown called, at least in terms of the angles that I saw on the replay. So there was another shot where Teofimo Lopez was coming in, got hit with another check. I believe it was another check lead right hook. And it was kind of a cuffing punch where the glove kind of wrapped around the head a little bit, which, you know, in another video right around now, I'm going to get into the Josh Warrington versus Luis Alberto Lopez fight where there were a lot of kind of cuffing punches that, you know, made their way to kind of the side or back of the head. But when Sandro Martin hit Teofimo Lopez with this, it looked like Lopez went down as a byproduct of that punch connecting. Like, if you want to call it, uh, you know, it wasn't a rabbit punch, but it was kind of, again, a cuffing punch that just wrapped around the side and back of the head. But what they didn't show on the replay was the feet. So if the feet did not get tangled and Teofimo Lopez fell as he got hit by Sandra Martin, then that should have been ruled a second knockdown in that fight. If it turned out that the feet were tangled and that was what knocked Teofimo Lopez off balance with the feet tangled, then no, it shouldn't have been a knockdown. But again, I didn't see the replay showing the legs. I just saw the upper bodies and it looked without seeing the legs like a knockdown. But again, if this was going to be ruled five rounds to five, then Sandra Martin uh, edges it by one point. And if you really want to stretch it out and say that Teofimo Lopez won six of the 10 rounds, it's going to take some real convincing. I, I need to rewatch the fight. I did not see that. I was look, I was trying my best to just watch the fight objectively, just absorb the information that I was witnessing. And it just looked like Santa Martin was more or less having his way. It looked like Teofimo Lopez was unsuccessfully in pursuit of Sandra Martin. He did, again, start to catch him more cleanly towards the end of the fight between rounds 8 and 10. But I just thought that the most accurate scorecard seemed to be 6 rounds to 4 for Sandra Martin, which means that he wins by an additional point on top of winning by one round. 
again, look, five rounds of five, okay, I can, I can understand it. Six rounds of four T.O., maybe, maybe, maybe. I didn't see it, but look, eight rounds to two, that did not happen, nor did seven rounds to three, which is what the other judge that had it for T.O. had it at. I did not see seven rounds to three. I did not see eight rounds to two. It's like, what are we watching, guys? It's like you're not even giving credit for something that should be at least factored in into who's winning, you know, the minute by minute frames within the round. I just thought that this was a bit of an injustice or injustice, but... I, I still want to stop short of calling it a robbery. I was, as I was watching it and I heard the scorecards, I thought that the scorecards were a robbery. Not, not that Teofimo Lopez won. It would, again, take some convincing, but you can potentially, I guess, make an argument for Teofimo Lopez edging the fight. But winning seven of those 10 rounds or eight of those 10 rounds, no, that is an injustice. But it's it's hard to call a fight a robbery just based on the result. So I don't think that Teofimo Lopez winning that fight was a robbery. But it seemed close to a robbery, that is. I mean, it was a close fight, but I really think that Sandra Martin should have been awarded the fight. But again, Teofimo Lopez finished strong. So hey, look, I get it, but I do not agree with those two judges' scorecards. But look, it did expose Teofimo Lopez's shortcomings. He does get a little bit predictable with his attacks, which is interesting because when he was racking up those, you know, uh, highlight real worthy knockouts, which uh, it was against lesser competition, but this is how he was building his name, like at 21, 22 years old before the fight against Lomachenko. He seemed like he was a little bit unpredictable. It seemed like he had some creativity in his offense. I thought that he showed creativity in his offense when he won that IBF title against Richard Comey. And even when he won against Vasily Lomachenko, I mean, he did jab to the body here and go with the right hand to the body in this fight. But it looked like the combinations that he was trying to land, it seemed like the punch pattern was already recognizable to Santa Martin. And he seemed like it was just second nature to kind of roll with the three to four punches that he knew was coming. That's what it appeared was going on in there. And speaking of unpredictability, Terrence Crawford unpredictable punch patterns. You see how that worked out for him against Avanesian, which I'm going to get to in another video. But yeah, this was a very interesting fight. You could tell that it was a very muted crowd and it did not seem to be going Teofimo Lopez's way. And it's not like the crowd didn't have enthusiasm by the time the fight started. I mean, they were coming off of the Jared Anderson knockout over Jerry Forrest. So the crowd, you know, was pretty hyped. But round over round, it just became more and more scary. I think that at least one of the commentators, I think it might have been Timothy Bradley. Congratulations on the Hall of Fame nod for Timothy Bradley. But I think that he was the one who said, yeah, I've got Sandra Martin winning this one. It just seemed like, you know, it, when the commentators say that it's anybody's guess and the A-side is in peril of losing the fight... The A-side fighter probably lost that fight because they would normally slightly err on the side of the A-side fighter just in terms of interpreting the action. Because, you know, sometimes when you're coming into the fight, they're just, you know, speaking glowingly about all of the attributes of the A-side fighter. But yeah, it started to get harder and harder as the fight was going on to complement the action that Teofimo Lopez was, was doing in there against Sandra Martin, where, uh, look, Sandra Martin is, I, I hope, going to get another big payday. I don't think that people are going to be lining up to fight him because he is such a Rubik's Cube and is just a tricky opponent. I don't think that the top, top names are going to be rushing to fight Sandra Martin, but I think that he's going to have another opportunity or two to fight another like 50-50 fight, just in terms of who you think is going to win going into it. I do think he's going to have more opportunities here. But yeah, let me know what you thought about Teofimo Lopez versus Sandra Martin. Teofimo Lopez really did not get a lot of the offense he was looking for off. And you can even see him when they were reading the judges' scorecards, like when they announced the first one going towards Sandra Martin, he just kind of like looked like, okay, oh, you know, whereas when he was fighting George Cambosos, he just seemed incredulous. He just seemed like he was appalled and just totally shocked at w what he was hearing. I haven't seen too much of the, uh, you know, post-fight commentary from the fighters themselves, but I can't imagine Teofimo Lopez was happy with the performance. I can imagine that he and his dad slash trainer are very relieved 
that they got away with this one. They got a somewhat a gift decision here. They are very fortunate to come out with this win. This would have been pretty catastrophic if Teofimo Lopez were to suffer a second loss in three fights. That would have been losing two out of your last three fights. And he would then have been one and one at 140. I still have big questions on what he can do at 140. It just seems like he is not the sweet scientist that a lot of people kind of made him out to be. I think that he's a very explosive puncher. I think that he can potentially just send anybody to the canvas. Very gifted puncher. But I, I think that that ring IQ, for lack of a better term, his, his nuance and I mean, I didn't think I'd be saying it, but his ability to set up his big power punches through his boxing acumen, I felt like it looked like it was lacking a bit here. And it, and again, early in his career, I mean, he's still very young. Let's keep that in mind. But earlier in his career, he was methodically setting up the big power punches, setting up that right hand. Well, it wasn't working out for him here against Sander Martin. So we'll see how things look going forward, but... Whew, this, this was a bit of a red flag, and it was a very close call for Teofimo Lopez. Let me know your thoughts on this one. Am I way off in thinking that this was a near robbery? Because, yeah, the scorecards just really left a bad taste in my mouth, and I, I don't think that justice was served. And it's going to be interesting to see how they match make for Teofimo Lopez next. I almost think that it would be on brand for him to take on a fighter that's even better than Sandra Martin and him, him being Teofimo Lopez actually pulling out a knockout victory against an even better fighter. That just seems to be what happened. Like what happened after he had a struggle fight against Nakatani, he returns to the ring and knocks out Richard Comey for the IBF belt. You know, it just seems like sometimes he responds to lackluster performances with very explosive and dramatic stoppage wins. So again, we'll see, but yeah, I've got a lot of questions about what Teofimo Lopez's next several fights are going to look like at 140. Let me know your thoughts. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. I'm Woog. Thanks for tuning in.